That's not that's not a purely conceptual question or uh, or anything like that. That is a question about the nature of time, about the nature of the real world. I think the same goes for metaphysics. So the question of whether absences can be causes is that a question about the real world? To me, that depends on whether there is any such thing as true causation. Because if there's no such thing as true causation, then we can just say, well, this is, there are these different languages we can speak. One in which we count absences as causes, and one in which we don't. But if there's true causation, then just like there's true forwards in time, we can say, no, the question is about whether, in the, whether there can be true uh, causes that are absent. And similarly, for the two languages we imagine teaching our children, one in which they say there are these um, temporal parts, and the other in which th there are not, if it's like the question above, those are equally good languages, and there's no true existence, because the question of temporal parts is an ontological question. It's one about what exists. If those are two equally good languages, that means there's no true existence, just like there's no true up. But if there is a true existence, if the world has built-in existence, just like some people think it has built-in direction of time, then those questions are not merely verbal. They are about the real world. Second point I want to make. You don't have to say the same thing in every case. And this is building on the first point. Is metaphysics about the real world? I think you should say it depends. It depends on which metaphysical question you're asking. Because whether a question is about the real world depends on whether the notions involved in that question are true. So you can't say whether um, are questions about space about the real world and expect a, a uniform answer, because questions about, about up are not about the real world, but questions about the direction of time might be. And questions about relative size, I think, definitely are about the real world. You've got to look in the individual cases. And for my money, I think that many metaphysical questions are not about the real world. So I actually think that the... the and, um, I think a lot of metaphysicians would disagree with me here, but I think a ton of metaphysical questions are not about the real world. So I think the dispute over causation is kind of like the dispute over martinis. I think you can, I mean, people have, people have mustered some interesting arguments on one side or the other, but I do not believe there is any such thing as true causation. I think you could talk in the one way and say that absences are causes, or you could talk in the other way and each would be fine. But I don't think that all metaphysical questions are like that. I think that there is a true exists so I think questions about whether there exist temporal parts or whether there exist properties, those questions are about the real world. So I make a big distinction between ontological questions, which are about the real world, and some other questions, which I think are not about the real world. I don't believe in a true cause or right, even a true personal identity. So I think those questions are really just questions about how we think and talk. Now, of course, that raises a final question, which is how do you tell? How can you tell whether the notions in one particular dispute are like relative size, in which case the dispute is about the real world, or like up and down, in which case it's not about the real world. And my answer to that is this. I think what you have to do to tell is, or at least to get it, to make an educated guess, is look to our very best theories of the fundamental world and ask what concepts do those theories what concepts can those theories absolutely not live without? What concepts are indispensable to our very best theories of the world? I think our very best theories of the world, the very best ones are physical, physical theories, physics. And the concept of relative size is indispensable in physics. You can't do space-time physics without bringing in notions of distance. Whereas, you don't need notions of up to do physics. You don't, if you read a fundamental physics textbook, it doesn't say, well, you've got to first figure out which direction is up. You, all you have to do is know the relative sizes and where the masses are. Of course, you can work out from those what people would call up at a certain point. But to state the laws of physics, you don't need to talk about up. You don't need to talk about cause. You don't need to talk about personal identity. That's why I think that those are not about the real world. But you do need to talk about exists. You've got to talk about there being these points of space-time. And there being these material objects moving around in space-time, perhaps, perhaps you just talk about the points of space-time. You've got to talk about there being these fields find over points of space-time. You have to talk about what there is. You have to bring in the concept of existence. And since the concept of existence is fundamental to physics, I think that questions about existence quite generally 
And so ontological questions, even about these pretty abstract matters, like about whether there exist temporal parts, I think even those are about the real world. Okay, that's the end. <laughs>
some of this, is that you should just distinguish between causation as it's used in the sciences versus causation as it's as it has its life in ordinary thought. Um, I guess one other, my only other thought about that is um, if you do start making these distinctions, you do have to look and see, well, is it really true that, so, so I, I made a distinction between five different kinds of causation or four in your results. Um, maybe, there might still be a problem with absences though, if we think that um, absences can cause in one particular of those um, senses. So we'll, we may still face the problem. Somewhere in the uh, issue of uh, contractual relationships involved with capital. So, so, oh, um, you have a contract you're going to use them. Mm -hmm. You have to fill out a contract after it's That's certainly right. Um, so, you, one thing you could do if you wanted to hold the view that you did not cause the cat to die mm -hmm. is you could say, we can still blame me, not because I caused the cat to die, but rather because um, I failed to fulfill the contract. Um, and so get the causation out of the responsibility. That would be another threat. Yeah. Uh, I'm less interested in the cat. I'm more interested in the naked man. Okay. <laughs> so, uh, so your final point is this. You know, there are some physical questions that are verbal, not about the real world, and there are some that are about the real world. So the question is, metaphysics about the real world doesn't seem to tell us much about a uh, nature of metaphysics. So I want to put the question in a different way. So uh, I want to hear from you uh, how you see uh, the nature of metaphysics. Do you think there are more such verbal disputes in metaphysics than in other areas of philosophy? Mm -hmm. And if that is the case, uh, uh, is there anything to do with the nature of metaphysics? Yeah, good question. Um, so one thing, so when I just took, Let's take one example. Um, let's take a picture of the example of causation. So I was claiming that's not about the real world. I would want to add something to that. I think that un I don't think that the question of the nature of causation is like the question of whether Appetini's are Martini's. I was making a, a simplified, one simplified distinction between question, you know, uh, between the Martini example and the question about the nature of electrons. But I would want to make a further distinction. So I think, because I think that some questions that are not about the real world in the sense that I was getting at are still very important, whereas the Martini example is not important. So I think of, my picture of the, the, the philosophy of causation is there's no such thing as a on true causation. So what we have to do in philosophy is figure out the way our concept of causation works, or maybe how the concept of causation, how, how maybe, maybe how multiple con concepts of causation work. work. And I think that's an important task because I think the notion of causation is very embedded in our conceptual scheme and, and understanding it is very important to understanding a ton of other things in our conceptual scheme. Whereas Martini's is kind of an isolated thing and it doesn't matter much. Um, so I would call the, um, I would make a distinction both between metaphysical substantivity and conceptual substantivity. And what I was mostly talking about in this talk was metaphysical substantivity and I think that questions of ontology are metaphysically substantive, and questions of causation are metaphysically not substantive, purely verbal. But they are conceptually substantive. Martini's neither metaphysically nor conceptually substantive. So what I think is that many, many questions in philosophy are conceptually very deep, conceptually substantive, but ultimately just about how our concepts work. Whereas, and so I think they are not about the real world. So I, so I think that, um, and in metaphysics, only a very small number are metaphysically substantive. I think that meta metaphysics may have more questions than other areas that are conceptually shallow. Because I do think some questions, I sort of think the absences thing is conceptually shallow. I think other questions about causation are, are, are deeper. Um, 